primary carer. That will often, of course, be a woman. But there are a number of cases where individuals are, as she rightly says, trapped in a position of dependence. And I, I hope that this bill will be an opportunity for us to do more work on that. And the Honourable Gentleman Ronda has been very persistent, so I, I have to give way to it. I'm very grateful. The, um, I hope the Secretary of State has seen the work that has been done in Drake Hall a Women's Prison, which shows that two-thirds, roughly, of women prisoners have had, when screened, have had a major traumatic brain injury or a history of it, and two-thirds of those injuries happened and prior to their first offending behaviour and were as a result of domestic violence. So wouldn't it make sense, first of all, if we screened every single um, woman prisoner before she arrived in prison to make sure that she had the right um, support? And secondly, if we, if, that we made sure that every single woman who was uh, potentially the, uh, uh, the, uh, had suffered from domestic violence was given the neuro rehabilitation that she needs to make sure she gets over the physical trauma? The Honourable Gentleman makes a very powerful point. It's one that I'm very familiar with, the cycle of abuse and then criminality, uh, and women who I've met in Eastwood Park very recently, very much in a similar position, particularly women from South Wales. Uh, I could uh, talk about individual uh, uh, meetings I had with women prisoners, but, Mr Speaker, this, the simple truth is that I get the point about acquired brain injury, and we want to do more about it. And I think, again, drawing that out in the debate is going to be really helpful for the Government. Can I just now move on as quickly as I can to the provisions in the bill, and I will uh, be uh, uh, generous as possible. Uh, 